I think I got it. Good evening. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Today is April the 16th, 2019. The thought for today is your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. Uh, that's Bill Gates. I want to go ahead and officially call this meeting to order tonight. Um, tonight we have a, a special guest with us tonight, um, uh, uh, Pastor Benford uh, from the Pleasant Glory Mi uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Sir, if you would, would you please come tonight and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your ministry, and um, please pr pray for our uh, community. Amen. Tell us where your church is located as well. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Name, name is uh, Reverend Dr. Brent Benford, um, pastor of President Glory Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we're new to the community on Highway 36. Um, great opportunity to minister. Uh, we have some of just some of the amenities at the church. Uh, we do have uh, Spanish classes. Uh, we have uh, three uh, bilingual teachers uh, that deal with Spanish, uh, French, and also uh, Portuguese. Uh, so we offer that to our children to try to get them ahead and advanced. Uh, we have certified teachers there that deal with our youth in uh, tutorial uh, after school program and uh, as well as getting them ready for college uh, prep tests and stuff. So we, we really get towards our youth um, and so we're just glad to be in the community uh, to serve and that's what we're here for. Thank you, sir. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for just allowing us into your presence. We ask your blessings upon this meeting. We ask that you just touch your Heavenly Father, each and every uh, commissioner here, Lord, and allow them to operate uh, together, Lord, in unity for the best of mankind to serve this community. Father, we ask your blessings upon each and every participant that will be here today. We ask, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to just lead and guide like only you can. And, Lord, we give you all praise, glory, and honor in advance. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name we pray, that every heart say amen. Amen. Pastor, we want to thank you uh, for being here tonight uh, and praying for our community. Um, uh, also, thank you for choosing Newton County to, uh, to plant your church. So uh, we're looking for great things uh, from your ministry, and, and uh, we know you will do a great job uh, here in Newton County. So tonight I have a little token of appreciation here uh, that I want to present to you. Um, on tonight, we have um, another special guest with us tonight uh, who's going to take us um, and lead us in our uh, Pledge of Allegiance tonight, um, Tyler Dorsey. If you would, please come up tonight. Tyler is uh, 15 years old. Um, he's at Alcove High School where, he's, where he's, he's a specialist. That's what his mother said. He's a specialist <laughs> <laughs> in, in uh, robotics. So. Um, if, if you will lead us with the play, if you, yeah, he's a Boy Scout as well as a 4-H um, camp leader, counselor. Also, his mom is a, one of the, where you, where you at, mom? Deputy? <laughs> one of our deputies that um, protect our community. So, mm -hmm. um, if you would, we're going to ask everybody to stand, and if you will lead us off, we'll follow your lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. going to get y'all up in just a few minutes. Um, next on the agenda uh, is the adoption of the agenda. Um, I don't think we have any changes tonight. I seek a motion of approval, please. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and second by uh, Commissioner Mason. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. It passes five to zero. 
Um, next, we have is citizens' comments. This is an opportunity that we allow citizens to come up and uh, make comments on agenda topics only. Agenda topics only. You may come at this time, you have three minutes to do so. Agenda topics only. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, evening, Mr. County Manager. My name is Gladstone Nicholson. I live at 495 Lakeside Circle, Covington. I'm here tonight. I missed a couple of meetings, but I had to come tonight just because of this robotics team from Alcove High School. And I'll just say that and let the rest of the show move on. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Agenda topics only. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the uh, chairman's report. Um, I, we're going to call up um, Coach Pitts, if you would, Mr. Pitts, come up and tell us a little, little bit about your team. And, and y'all know y'all are headed to the, to, I think, the World Nationals or something like that, right? That's We're correct. going to the World Championship. The World Championship, yeah. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, sir. Commissioners, County Manager, thank you very much for having us here today. I'm just here to break the ice, and then I'm going to get out of the way and let the kids do this. Um, and so, if they look at you funny, I've just told them to imagine you naked. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, what I want to do is just give a broad overview, and then I'm going to let the kids do specifics. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Huge push in education. And as we know as a community, full of manufacturing and full of technology jobs and technology jobs that are being, being welcomed in, science, technology, engineering, and math play a critical role in that endeavor. To that end, a STEM program for K through 12 has been implemented by Dr. Schmidt and the Board of Education uh, in general, specifically spearheaded by Dr. Schmidt, who is our CTA Director of County, uh, to, to further those STEM initiatives. One thing he does, or he founded, was the VEX Robotics Program in Newton County. It goes from kindergarten all the way to, K, all the way to 12th grade. VEX IQ is in the elementary basically kindergarten through sixth grade, and then they do VEX IQ in seventh and eighth grade as well. VEX EDR then takes over from ninth through twelfth grade, and that's what you're going to see a demonstration of. And then if they choose to, VEX U, which is a university, uh, stands for university, it takes over at the university level. We do have VEX U in Kennesaw State currently. Uh, there are other sister robotics programs that kind of feed into that as well, like FIRST Robotics at Georgia Tech. And so this is a very, very well-founded uh, way of connecting STEM, specifically engineering, specifically robotics and automation, which is huge in this county, into our curriculum. So with that being said, I want to introduce Mr. Farmer. He's going to tell you some specifics about VEX EDR. Hello, my name is Blake Farmer and I'm going to give you kind of a little rundown on VEX EDR and how our game works in the competition. And VEX EDR is a branch of the robotic systems that VEX, the corporation, makes and we build robots using metal that we buy from them and different electronics and we go and compete at tournaments and if we win a tournament or get an award at a tournament that can qualify us for state, we qualify it or we can run a robot at state and go to the competition and if we place high enough, we can make it to Worlds, which we did this year. And every single year, there's a new game released, and we have to build a robot. There's no, there's no set kit for what we build to try to do the best at the game and compete against others. And in our game this year, we have to climb a platform and two different levels, equaling different points to higher, equaling more points. We have to be able to shoot flags and pick up round thing that we have down here called a cap and be able to flip it to our color. And to tell us how we got, tell y'all how we got to Worlds, I'm going to introduce Mr. Freeman. Um, 
So my name is Damari Freeman, and I'm going to tell you how we got to Worlds. So our season this year has been a really, a very good season, and we placed very high in most matches, and we even won a tournament on, at Kennesaw State University at the Marietta campus. So, and we got in, we got into, we got qualified for state earlier in the season, but at the VEX state competition, there was like technological issues with the towers and the static buildup, so it couldn't allow us to run our robots. So we kind of placed somewhat poorly, but at the TSA state competition, that's where we placed really excellent. We placed six out of 100 teams at that competition. And we also placed, we also scored 31 points at the skills section of that competition. So, and those numbers impressed the judges over there so much that they personally invited us to come and compete internationally at, Ken at Louisville, Kentucky to, at the World's Competition. Uh, <laughs> now I'd like to bring up Michael Adams. Hey guys, thank you for having us again. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate our robot, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a look. Yeah, we're gonna come. Yeah, we're gonna come. Yeah. It's a little bit easier on the mats we use yeah, on our fields, so but. So then there would be a pole right here, and we just stack them on top of it with the correct size. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Um, so our design, we have this mechanism. This is the most efficient way that we have found to be able to stack caps from the ground onto the poles to score points. Because with the point, oh yeah, true. Okay, with how many points you can score in the game with different things, this is one of the least effective methods. But we still wanted to be able to do it just in case. So we have a pretty efficient way of doing that in our shooter has a punch mechanism where a bar is pulled back and with rubber bands it, la it launches up and hits the ball, being able to shoot it. And then we have a six motor base so we can drive on the platform without, it's a PVC pipe that we have to drive up onto with a platform on it. And so none of the robot bottoms out on the PVC pipe. We're able, we have wheels to catch that and keep getting onto the platform. And we have an intake on the back of the robot that can either flip the caps or it can pick up balls and put it into the shooter. And on, on this four, the caps slide around a lot. We use a foam four, so those are sliding around a little easier. But yeah. And nothing that, anything that we build, it wasn't given like a br blueprint from VEX or whatever. We just have a game and we have to come up with ideas and go through the engineering and design process to figure out the best mechanisms to do the challenge in the game. And that's what we've been doing for the past whole school year and even in last year was trying to test out different mechanisms and see what worked best for us. Um, one of our biggest challenges was um, testing our shooter because the angle of the shooter had to be exactly perfect to hit like the targets on the things. So um, we had to change the shooter angle elite. It was for several times for several different matches. Yeah. And um, that was just one of our biggest struggles this year. 
but we did uh, make it for our state, and it's all good now. Mr. Chairman, if I could make a comment yes, um, about these gentlemen. I, I need somebody to refresh my memory on, on where Alcove High School is. What district is that again? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, right. Right. <laughs> district 1 has some smart, some smart kids in there. <laughs> Hey guys, we want to make a couple of comments to y'all. You guys come back in for one second. I know you want to get work on Jupiter some more, but let me tell you, I, I, was, I wasn't kidding when I said what I said about District 1. I'm very proud of you guys. That's, uh, I wish I had done that there in high school instead of some of the other things I, had, I did in high school. So, um, very proud of you, Con, uh, continue your education, whether that be college, whether that be a vocation of that type. But uh, as a matter of fact, I started right there. I, I started in electronics when I was not too much older than you. So um, keep up the good work you make in Newton County and particularly District 1, very proud. <laughs> Thank you guys. can we add, there's also some District 2 in there as well. Let's not leave them out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, I definitely will be calling you because I need a robot um, to wash dishes and fold clothes and, <laughs> and all of that stuff. But no, we appreciate you guys. Good luck. Um, going, are you, you're going to the, the World Championship, right? Yes, there's going to be over 35 countries represented. Wow, and that's so awesome. We're hoping, I'm hoping that they'll get, uh, we've got a, uh, I think a, uh, someone from Singapore, I think Singapore, so I'm hoping they get paired together so Singapore can't speak English. <laughs> well, guys, we're going to be pulling for y'all again. Good luck and con congratulations as well. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, it is approximately um, 7.30. Uh, so we're going to go in our public hearing tonight. And our, I'm sorry. Yeah. Our, our public hearing going to consist of number 12 only. Well, for, for zoning, it's going to be, for zoning, it's going to be number 12 only for zoning. So we have a public hearing on 11, but we're going to do zoning first. Good evening. How you doing, sir? Good evening. How are you? <clears throat> That's a tough act to follow. It is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have one item on the zoning agenda tonight, and that is a conditional use permit. Um, it is um, petition uh, CUP. 19 uh, The proposed use is an auto truck repair business. Um, the location is 96 Chamisa Road. The primary address is 90 Chamisa Road. Parcel size is 2.32 acres total. Tax parcel is 2477E. Future land use is a development node. The existing zoning of the property is M1 light industrial. Uh, it's in the Yellow River watershed in uh, district number three. The applicant's intent is to establish an auto truck repair business in the Almond Overlay District. Uh, on March 26, 2019, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the petition, uh, CUP 19000001, with recommended staff conditions <coughs> by a vote of three to zero. There's an aerial view of the property. And the tenant, uh, well, the, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the, per, the applicant is going to be in this tenant space right here of the building. Uh, that's the 
future land use map showing us in the development node. The zoning map showing it is M1, light industrial. And the overlay map showing it is in the Almond Overlay uh, District. There's a plat of the property. Um, as I said, the tenant will be in this uh, tenant space here. Also like to add that there is a, uh, a chain link fence, six foot chain link fence all the way around the property. Uh, and it is uh, opaque. Uh, conclusion, staff recommends that the Planning Commission um, recommend approval of the conditional use request to establish an auto truck repair shop in the Almond Overlay District with staff recommended conditions. If this petition is approved by the Board of Commissioners, it should be approved for a conditional use permit for an auto repair subject to the owner's agreement to the following enumerated conditions. Where these conditions conflict with the stipulations and offerings contained in the letter of intent, these conditions shall supersede unless specifically stipulated by the Board of Commissioners. To the owner's agreement to abide by the following development standards and regulations. Number one, all activities for automobile repair shall be carried on entirely within the enclosed building. Number two, prior to the allowance of any outdoor storage on the property, the applicant will provide a plan showing the area in which the storage will occur to be approved by the Department of Development Services. Number three, outdoor storage is limited to 25% of the total lot or 0.58 acres of the 2.32 acre tract. Number four, outdoor storage areas and refuse containers shall be screened and buffered so as not to be visible from the public right of ways or abutting residentially zoned property. And number five, record service, salvage, abandonment, or demolition, recovery, or repossession of automobiles and trucks and temporary storage of said vehicles is prohibited. Is there any questions? Uh, thank you, uh, Scott. Uh, Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Scott, thank you. Um, a question that I have is, um, this is for an auto repair, but not an auto body. Is that correct? Uh, correct. The applicant has not said anything about doing any kind of body work or painting. So, um, so I'm just wondering if there should be a condition that's stipulated that reflects that there shall not be any painting or finishing of motorized vehicles that we could add to the conditions. That's fine. And I, mean, I guess we can, when the, is the applicant here? I believe he's here. Yeah, he's so here. when the applicant yeah. comes up, we can just ask him if he's, sure. if that's acceptable to him. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Thank you, Scott. Okay. We're now at the portion of our public hearing where we want to uh, open it up for the applicant and, and those that want to speak in favor. Um, you have 10 minutes to do so tonight. If you would, please come and state your name and your address for the record, please. You may come at this time. The applicant and those that want to speak in favor. <clears throat> please state your name and your address for the record, please. Dustin McDowell, and I'm sorry I'm dressed like this, I actually running behind, so I got two kids, so I'm sure y'all understand. Yeah, yeah. Last time I was here, it was all fancy, I promise. <laughs> um, as far as auto body, I don't do auto body. I'm not a good painter. I'm not going to lie about it, so um, I don't mind that whatsoever. Um, outdoor stores, there will be none. I don't, I'm not your normal uh, auto body repair like you see on that road. I actually do high-end cars like Lamborghinis, uh, you know, old Cutlass, G-bodies, drag cars, Corvettes, stuff of that nature, and tuning. Um, so, and I'm also not open to the public per se like that. You have to schedule with me. Um, so it's by schedule only. Um, it's not like you can walk in, bring your car, drop it off and leave. Um, so, I mean, as far as all that, that's, I don't really know what to say. I'm out of breath. I ran all the way up here from the parking <laughs> lot. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, um, Commissioner, but, any more questions for him? No. Thank you, sir. Good. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Anyone else want to speak in favor? <clears throat> please state your name, your address for the record, please. 
Mark Parker, 1996 Continental Drive, Atlanta. Uh, we are the owners of the building and just wanted to state that we've had a great deal of discussion with Dustin regarding his use. We would not release to a traditional repair shop because that's not really kind of the, the atmosphere we want, but because it's high end, because he keeps it immaculate, uh, we think that this is a really good use and would not actually have to get this conditional use permit were we not adjacent to residential. But that residential is over 330 feet away from his space. And actually that residential is currently being, has been submitted to be rezoned for industrial. Thank you, sir. Anyone else want to speak in favor? Thank you. That portion of our um, public hearing is closed. Now we want to open it up for those that want to um, oppose tonight. Um, you also have 10 minutes to do so. If you would, please come and state your name, your address for the record, please. Anybody want to oppose tonight? Anybody want to oppose tonight? Thank you. That portion of our public hearing is also closed. Um, Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I would like to add a um, condition six, and I'll read that condition first. Um, you, use shall not include any painting or finishing of motorized vehicles. So I would like, is that acceptable? Use shall not include any painting or finishing of motorized vehicles. So I'd like to move for approval of CUP 19000001 with the recommended conditions. It's been motioned by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Edwards. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. It passes five to zero. Thank you. Um, you doing this? You doing this? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so number 11 um, didn't have to be advertised, so we're going to go back to our regular um, agenda. Um, we're going to finish up the chairman's report. We have with us tonight uh, Mr. Ralph Staffens of the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, the Chamber. <laughs> if he would, please come and give us an um, update, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commission. I appreciate you all having me today and I appreciate what you all do for our fine community um, every day. I'm gonna go through all three of our departments like I always do and uh, maybe uh, pay some special emphasis to economic development, which you contribute towards. Um, but we're gonna start off with tourism. Um, I always show you this slide, it's, it's hard to see, but it's a chart of the visitors, the tourists that come into our community. February um, saw an increase of 28% over the February from last year. Visitors last month in February came from 27 different states and countries as far away as Germany, Indonesia, and Japan. This is, uh, you probably can see it better on your computer screen, but this is the actual state um, given numbers of direct tourist spend in our community. And so it lags a year behind, but the, this shows that $135 million was spent directly in our community by tourists, non-Newton County residents. That was up by $6 million from last year. Um, we have uh, some new programs. We are going to host Bragg, which is bike ride across Georgia in June. Um, they're gonna be at one of our schools and they're gonna fill up our hotels as well. And we're gonna have shuttles running from the schools to the hotels to downtown for 1,200 guests for one evening. Uh, and it's actually on a Monday night. So what better way to pump some money into the economy on a Monday night than to have 1,200 people come and visit our community. We had a master's promotion this month. Um, we were um, very busy with, with master's guests, to say the least. We had them from all over the United States of America and other countries um, as well. 
we did we did we partnered with Bridgestone as our um, sponsor, and we were working to get the visitors out of from just the interstate into our golf courses and into our um, dining that's not located along the interstate. Um, I want to hop in and talk about um, Main Street. We had a great uh, Valentine's event. I'm sure some of y'all attended that. The uh, business owners were very pleased with that. We started something new with our Main Street and downtown businesses. Uh, you know, the chamber has an expertise in business development. Um, that's something we think we do really well. And so we're starting to bring that into the Main Street people, our Main Street businesses, I would say. And we started our first Cove class. It was called Marketing Towards Millennials. We had 15 businesses there. Um, and the next class is next month. It's uh, Social Media 101. We also had a scavenger hunt that brought um, over 100 people to the square. This past weekend, we also had our putt-putt on the green. I don't know if any of you came to that, but there was uh, so many people. It was just a constant flow of families, and it was just good to see that wholesome family fun being had on our square. And at 9 o'clock at night, I talked to um, a group of about 25 Oxford students who had walked all the way across that bridge from Oxford to come and eat dinner and do the putt-putt. So that was a tremendous success as well. We've had our retreat. Um, I won't bore you with the details of that, but we've got some things that we want to do. We want to get, um, as you see, this is the side of the Masonic Lodge. We want to paint a mural on there that's representative of uh, Covington and Newton County. So we have RFPs out currently right now for that. Um, we have also decided we're going to up our game at Christmas time. And so we have some RFPs out to see what we can do a little different. We feel like we've done the same thing for a few years in a row now with our Christmas lights. They're beautiful, so don't hear me wrong. But there's uh, some things that we might be able to do a little bit different. Our mobile app, um, if you don't have it, you need to download this app. It lets you know everything there is to know about downtown Covington. We're up to 1,100 users. Our goal is to be at 1,350 by the end of the year. Um, you can find it at the, app, the Apple Store or um, the Android Store. On to economic development. Um, we have seen several new announcements and groundbreakings as of uh, recent. Uh, we've been very busy. The, we've got two hotels that have been approved. This is a Hilton product <coughs> home to go um, suites by Hilton. And then the Avid Hotel going down near uh, on 278 there. Uh, we've also got a lot of retail going on right now. I actually had to run out and take a new picture of what Chick-fil-A looked like this afternoon to get it into this presentation because when I gave this to city council two weeks ago, um, it was just dirt. And now there's a building there. Um, we also have another fast food restaurant being built on 278 as well. We have seven industrial projects. These projects, some of them are game-changing projects. We hope to have some uh, announcements this summer. I think it's going to be a very big summer for the industrial section of our community. Um, some of us got the pleasure to have lunch with Governor Kemp um, and his top aides that are from Newton County, and we, we got to talk about some of this stuff this, this week, in fact. Uh, we have 14 retail projects going on as well, and they're going on from the furthest west side of our community to the furthest east side of our community. Um, I was on the phone with somebody who put a teaser out um, on a project he's going to announce in about a week and a half, and I asked him could I announce it, and he told me no, but y'all can get on get on facebook and see that teaser i promise you'll find it um but it's over on the salem road brown bridge area on the corner there um as you can see one of our goals is our workforce these young folks are amazing were they not amazing it's mm -hmm. it's incredible to see <clears throat> the leadership in our school system and the positive impact they're having on our future our future is bright in newton county and it's it's uh, a lot of that rest on the school system and the, so, the shoulders of that leadership but you look here at our unemployment rate um it wasn't very long ago we were at 13 percent unemployment uh at the end of last year we were at 3.6 percent unemployment uh full unemployment is 3.5 percent it has gone up a little bit since then but not a whole lot so we are um people are employed that's for sure Workforce is going to be the big deal of the future. We, we heard it from the governor this week. Um, communities that can win at workforce are going to be the communities that can win projects. And you all know that we were the second community in the state to start the German apprenticeship um, program. Currently, we have seven companies. You see their logos there. 
they host apprentice. I've told you all about the program before, but we have 11 apprentices total and the students are on track. We've had some hiccups, but they're learning curves and you got to learn as you go. And so this is a program that we are tremendously proud of. Um, Dr. Holston, have y'all had a chance to meet Dr. Holston yet? He's a new president of GPTC. One of the first things he did was start this um, workforce ready, this manufacturing ready program. That's a picture of the first class. The, section, the second class is actually already graduated. Um, we're working with the um, sheriff's office as well to see if we can get some of some of the nonviolent offenders through this program as well so that they can get a good solid job when they um, finish the issues they are dealing with. And this is what the future looks like uh, for our workforce development. It's a, man, a Metro <coughs> Atlanta corporate college. Our economic development team went down with Georgia Piedmont's economic development team to Polk College. It's the only one in the country and they draw from uh, several states. When I say regionally, I don't mean just a few counties around them, but I mean several states. And that's what we hope to be able to do right here in Newton County. We already have the manufacturing lab, but we hope to be able to do not only leadership and professional development, but manufacturing, transportation, as well as, um, uh, goodness, there's one more film as well. So that's, that's one of our goals. And one thing we're working on very hard I want to thank you for your support, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask why I had the opportunity to make sure as you are working on your budget to make sure that we are kept whole this year. Um, we have a lot coming down the tracks so and going to need, need that funding and support from you all going forward. And I'll take any questions anybody might have. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know what I'm uh, Commissioner Henderson. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but, but first of all, I just want to thank you. It's more of a uh, comment than a question. Well, thank you, because uh, I know that Anthony, you, and a little bit myself, you know, did the, uh, the Joint Fair at Nelson Height Community Center, and that was a success. I mean, it was about five people that called me and said, and thanked me. I said, well, it's the, probably thanking the wrong person, but it's still good <laughs> for them receiving the job. And we've been intending to call the other, it's around 100 people who came and applied for, uh, for employment. We've been intending to call them and just have a, a good number so that we can tell everybody how successful uh, it was that job fair, and, and I'm telling you, um, there's a lot of work. If if you want a job, you can find one here in in Newton County. If you want one there, if you don't want one, you might be able to find one. But I agree, and, and you can get trained for thank any you. job you want to get, you, and that's that's the key. And you know. you're you're absolutely right. We had a huge success at the job fair there in Nelson Heights. Um, to be able to keep that job fair in that community and help people in that community was amazing. And that's what the chamber's for, right? I mean, that's what the chamber is for, is to go into communities and help business find the right employees. Thank you, um, Commissioner Edwards. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Ralph, we're going to be able to get Tiger here to, to to tour the factory, or the Bridgestone factory over here since he won with a Bridgestone ball. Well, Tiger's already been here this year to uh, film his commercial, so <laughs> I'm sorry. He'll be back, though. Don't don't worry. But that has been, I mean, uh, Covington is trending um, on the social media aspects because of what Tiger has done. And the good job that Bridgestone has done pushing that out there is our office has done, done as well. Um, Bridgestone is a huge player in our community. In fact, they were recognized at the governor's luncheon on Monday um, for – for what they do for the state of Georgia. Um, Commissioner Schultz and then Commissioner Henderson. So I just want to put a plug in for Bridgestone. Um, Dan Murphy was on CNBC yesterday and um, was quoted in Golf Digest yesterday as well. So good things for Bridgestone. Absolutely. Former chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, Dan Murphy, has um, come home to be the CEO and the president of Bridgestone. And it's good for Covington. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Ms. C. I just, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on what you said a little bit up about Brian, Brian Kemp, our governor. You know, for all those times that he came when I was on his board and Tim had him at ACCG and him and his wife, there were no better people that you could meet or talk with and who cared as much about this community, about Jordan, than them. And this was the time we run for Secretary of State. And the, the best thing that it's a lot of people who are from Covington is a member of his, of his staff. You know, we've been at the um, Agriculture Center that we dedication, and uh, it's a lot of local, well, some local people, I'm gonna say a lot, 
who are who have a big time, I call them big time job at the governor's office. And um, I think it's proud to speak volumes for Covington, Newton County. Absolutely. It can't hurt anything, can it? <laughs> uh, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ralph, I want to first say thank you, man, for everything that you do for our uh, community, for our county. Um, I just want to add that that app is phenomenal, the Main Street app. And I, I think if we can get more uh, advertisement around that, uh, because I have it, and it lets me know everything that's going on. And so I think it's a phenomenal tool that we can really push and utilize within our communities uh, to really make people aware, because a lot of times people say, well, I don't know what's going on. Um, and of course, if they have that app, uh, it automatically sends those notifications. So I want to say I think that's an amazing idea. And I think if we can find some way to really push that out there, uh, I've been kind of letting people know in District 2, hey, download the app, download the app, download the app, so that they know, um, I think we'll really get a lot more people involved in a lot of the events that we're having. So thank I, you for I that. I agree. Thank, thank you for the kind of comments. And I will say I've heard several times about a community calendar, the need for that. Um, when people in your district ask you about that, tell them to go to co gocovington.com. There's a community calendar, and everything that is fed to us gets put on that calendar. Now, that's not to say we catch everything there is in the community because sometimes we don't, we don't know about it, but it's a good starting place to know exactly what's going on in the community. GoCovington.com. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, sir, for being here, giving us an update. We well, thank I appreciate all y'all do for our community. Thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Um, next is um, Mr. Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, tonight, I, th I think we'll go right to the slides there, uh, please, uh, Brian. Um, and we'll take a look at the uh, report. Next slide, please. Um, is the um, population, our staffing report uh, for, for um, last month, we had 11 new hires and nine separations. Uh, it, the next slide, please. The uh, permits, residential permits, or I'm sorry, primary commercial, let's start off with there. Primary commercial permits during this past um, uh, year to date, April, um, were six, totaling $1.7 million, whereas last year at this same time, we had three, totaling $360,000. So we are picking up some with our commercial development. Uh, falling a little behind on residential, 174 for this uh, year versus 187 for last year. Not much behind, but just a little bit. We have had, um, <coughs> pardon me, numerous uh, signed permits um, as well. Go to the next slide, please. And the next one, please. And the next one, I just talked about that just a minute ago, so we're fine there. Next one, please. Uh, this is the total work reports, or I'm sorry, work uh, uh, report of the work orders that were done by district. And you can see there uh, which the numbers inside of your districts, and these are based on requests for uh, work to be done. Uh, also, you can see the roads that are being paved by the um, uh, paving crew. Um, we are in our 2019 LMIG resurfacing projects. And so you, <clears throat> a lot of these are underway. Um, we have had some equipment problems, but we've overcome them now and we're back busily paving. Um, at the intersection of Flat Shoals and Covington Bypass, uh, they're still doing some utility relocates, but um, the uh, project is on track and is on budget, so it's, it's moving ahead. Um, next slide, please. This is a picture we had our first Newton County Veterans Court graduate, uh, Mr. Robert T. Dorsey, uh, who's standing there in the center with uh, uh, Judge Johnson on the left and Richard Kringer, who is the program coordinator on the right. And he's the first one through and hopefully he'll be the first of many. Next slide, please. And this is a picture of all of the, <coughs> pardon me, all of the uh, uh, people who are working in the court 
um, who are in the support roles. Um, and actually, uh, there are three mentors there who are former, um, who are also veterans, who's um, they've taken it upon themselves to help uh, shepherd uh, people who are in the uh, veterans court uh, through offering advice and, and uh, some friendship there sometimes when they need it. So, and you see uh, the sheriff is also there along with the judges and several other people. Um, next, uh, and it, <coughs> pardon me, we get to do some interesting things every once in a while. One of those is that uh, there was an injured owl, a barred owl, that was uh, brought into the animal control um, facility last December and uh, wasn't able to fly, so we put it, we took it to a wildlife center and uh, they healed it, or uh, provided medical care and all, and it healed. And so we were able to set it, tr uh, set it free um, just uh, this past week. So and there he is taking off and going, so. <laughs> Next slide is a picture from our second annual egg hunt. Had over 150 kids. So uh, quite a success, and they seem to enjoy it. You can see the <coughs> people with the face paint on there. And <clears throat> the final slide was the Easter egg hunt winner. And um, you can see how she got her basket. There's a few other pictures, too. And there we go. Wow. Um, and that concludes the manager's report. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Um, any questions? Thank you. Our next on the agenda is um, consent agenda. I seek a motion that we approve it, please. There's been motion by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Edwards. Um, any discussion? All in favor? It passed five to zero. Uh, next on the agenda is um, finance, senior service, uh, Mr. Kerr. <coughs> Pardon me. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a request to purchase some food prep equipment, some tables, and all that we need in order to continue our Meals on Wheels program. The money that is uh, being supplied for this is through the 2019 uh, Community Service Block Grant, and uh, there is no matching uh, to the county. And because the purchases are over $5,000, uh, we wanted to present this um, to you for approval. This equipment will also be uh, instrumental and will be uh, used, it's gonna be much needed, is much needed and will be used also um, when the uh, services, when the Senior Services Center is expanded, so. Thank you, sir. would ask that you approve this request. Thank you. Um, I seek a motion. There's been a motion by Commissioner Henderson mm -hmm. and second by Commissioner Schultz. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. It passes five to zero. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is item number 11, um, discussion and approval of resolution R041619. Uh, Mr. Kirk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Pardon me. We are required annually to update our capital improvement settlement as well as our short-term work program, um, both of which are part of our comprehensive plan. Um, and we do so uh, be partly because of the fact that we uh, do impose impact fees and as a part of the impact fee ordinance, we're required uh, to make this annual report. Um, we did go through and updated, <clears throat> pardon me, some of the projects. Uh, in terms of completion dates and funding. And we also updated um, the projects that have been completed thus far. This is a transmittal uh, hearing. And we are, at this time, what we will, what is, will be occurring is we're simply asking you to approve the transmittal of this short-term, the CIE short-term work program to be transmitted to the Northeast Georgia Regional Development Center and they will review it, comment, send it back to us. At that time, uh, if there are any significant comments that need correction, we'll make those corrections and then bring it back to you for adoption. Once it's, it is adopted, then it will be sent to the Department of Community Affairs. And um, so we, we 
<clears throat> all of those things will happen in accordance with our timeline of getting this updated. So t typically <clears throat> it takes about 60 days for North for the regional um, commission to do their review. So um, if you'd like, I can read the transmittal resolution. Okay. Um, I think we need to open it up. Sure. Uh, we'll close it here. Okay. Um, at this time, it's approximately 8.01. We're going to take an opportunity to open up for our public hearing. Uh, we'll allow 10 minutes for those that want to speak in favor of this. You may come at this time. Please state your name and your address uh, for the record, please. Those that want to speak in favor. Anyone want to speak in favor? Thank you. That portion of our public hearing is closed. Now we want to open it up for those that want to oppose this. You also have 10 minutes to do so tonight. If you would, please come and state your name and your address for the record, please. Uh, you may come at this time. Anyone want to oppose? That portion of our public hearing is closed. Um, Mr. Kerr, if you would. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Whereas Newton County, Georgia has prepared an annual update to a capital improvements element and short-term work program, and whereas the annual <coughs> update of the capital improvements element and short-term work program was prepared in accordance with the development impact fee compliance requirements and the minimum planning standards and procedures for local comprehensive planning established by the georgia planning act of 1989 and the public hearing was held on april 2nd 2019 in the newton county historic courthouse commission meeting room be it therefore resolved that the newton county board of commissioners does hereby submit the annual update of the capital improvements element and short-term work program covering the five-year period of 2018 to 2022 to the Northeast Georgia Regional Commission for regional review as per the requirements of the Georgia Planning Act of 1989, specifically including, including Rule 110-12-1.04, uh, paren 2, paren B, 1, uh, paren annual update option adopted this 16th day of April, 2019. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner, I seek a motion. It's been motioned to approve by Commissioner Schultz and second by Commissioner Cowan. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. It passes five to zero. Thank you. Next is item number 13. Um, I'm going to let Attorney Martin uh, do the final reading on this one. I don't want to mess up their name, if you would. It's kind of interesting. I've never turned it on and said this is a final reading of anything. <laughs> so um, as Chairman Baines indicated, this is a uh, final reading for an alcohol license in District 1 uh, being Anara Zari, Inc. doing business as Fast Trip. Um, the licensee is, and I'm doing my best here, Huzia Damani, and the address is 10946 Highway 278 East, Covington, Georgia, 30014. Commission Edwards. Thank you. Move for approval as stated by the county attorney. <laughs> this is a motion for approval by Commissioner Edwards and second by Com uh, Commissioner Mason. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor? Pass this five to zero. Thank you. Next, we allow, uh, next is uh, item number 14, citizens' comments. This is an opportunity that we allow citizens to come up and um, talk about um, anything, if you would, please come and state your name, your address for the record. You do have three minutes to do so. If you would come at this time. <clears throat> please state your name, your address for the record, please. Curtis Woods, 500 Ridgeway, Covington, Georgia. Um, that's something that actually has come to my attention over the last few weeks. Um, I want to actually start this off by saying, um, specifically about the uh, young men that are here today from the robotics club at Mark Holden School. <coughs> and I like to say that's a testament to what excellent facilities and people can do well. Well, about five weeks ago, I found out, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you did too, was that they're actually building in high school. Turns out that it actually starts right up against Mark Park. <coughs> have no problem with that. However, being able to get a little bit more information about what's going in, 
how far it's going to be from my property line. They actually start bulldozing to get over there. So, I, and what I'm trying to find out is, okay, if this is detrimental to my property line, how far this, uh, they're going to build this from my home. Also, all I'm trying to find out, which there's no uh, response from the Board of Education about if the children's going in, if lighting's going in. If so, is there going to be more mitigation? Uh, and not just mine, but another one of my neighbors who couldn't be here tonight uh, due to scheduling conflicts, you know, and she can't seem to find out anything. All I know is trees are coming down. And I also, being what I, the, the line of work I'm in, I do understand that having trees on your property, mature trees, actually has a very different effect on your property values too. And the noise, also too, I cannot seem to find anything about the now, they just um, finished installing that new roundabout at the 278-142, and what are we going to do about that with the buses and other traffic that are there? One of my one of my uh, neighbors last week put his property in the seven. And like I said, I made phone calls about this, but I can't seem to get a response from them. Make a phone call or whether or not in this area, um, you know, they, uh, they're not available, or I get an answer machine, or one of six. I haven't been able to get any of it. Now, now I spoke to uh, Mr. Uh, Edwards, I believe. Yes, Mr. Stan Edwards here um, about three weeks ago about this. And, and he was just surprised as I was about um, about the building. And once again, I have no problem with higher education, better facilities for um, for the for the young men and women around here. However, I like to know how this is going to impact my property. And uh, I moved, I, I've only been a resident of this area for approximately two and a half years now. And I moved out here to get away. I'm on about three and a half acre lot. And and like I said, I really like to know. So I can plan for my future about what I'm gonna do if I need to out. I love this area and I like to stay. But I like to know what's going on. Stadium, lights, barriers, noise mitigation, fencing, everything. But I can't see any time in it. And I'm just wondering maybe letting you know <coughs> the pressure is going on. Um thank you. Um, Commissioner Edwards, he will address you um, after the, after the meeting is over with. If you yes. want to hang around just for a few minutes, and he'll yes. address you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Yeah, three minutes, brother. As you know, I'm Gene Wills, 125 Homestead Road, Everton, Georgia. Uh, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, in light of uh, Senate Bill 77, we would like to start looking into a, a plate or a placard or something put at the base of the statue of significant size so we will all know the truth about slavery and what went on in the history of this country and in, in the history of, of Georgia. Uh, you know, I had a hard time understanding why people would promote a lie and stand by that lie. And uh, when I think about the stories I've been told, I've been told a story, uh, well, those stories help me understand. I've been told a story where a, 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 a person told me that they had a uh, a black man coming over their house to pick up some fish or deliver some fish and that black person went to the back door they didn't understand why that black person went to the back door but the key to the story is that black man understood why he went to the back door his kids understand why he went to the back door and he taught his kids his those kids it goes on and on to how to survive in this in this county, how to survive as a black man, period. Uh, I was told another story about how a uh, guy, he uh, said that he, his, his mother had a, they had a farm and they had help come by in the morning. And she would cook breakfast for all the workers. And all the white people would sit at the kitchen while she, she was serving and she would fix a plate for this black person. And that black person had to go 
out to the back where the dog was at to eat that kill. Now he swears the guy was happy with that. But see, I think there's a serious problem as uh, accepting African Americans as human beings. We're 99.9 the same. We are human beings. When our children were ripped from us, we cried. We have relatives around this country we will never meet. When we were lynched, we would cry. The first people who enslaved us didn't understand that we could feel pain. We was experimented on without any type of medication to find out what's, how, what's inside of us by doctors and, and other people because they didn't think we could feel pain. To this day, they don't really like to give anesthesia or pain medication to black people because they think we are not we do not feel those pain, that pain. So thank, thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> please state your name, your address for the record, please. <clears throat> Good evening, Archie Shepherd, man, 169 Village Drive, Covington, Georgia. I come to try to get some information about uh the um Scolds on the restaurants in in Newman County. I was in the uh, food processing business for 35 years. That's just the line of work that I did. And the plants that we worked in, when we go in the door, they have a hair net there, they have a head net there that you had to wear. And if you didn't have that, Oh, you got caught in the plant, you could get a right. Those are, uh, 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 you know, processing things. Mm -hmm. But I'm beginning to have a problem with going in restaurants now with people that got all kind of hell with their head and whatnot. And the food you eat sometimes, you get had and whatnot. Who, who, who is the ones that make these, uh, you know, go into the restaurant and make these scolds and things? Because I, I went before the city and asked them, and uh, I think it's, it's getting to the point now that uh, food handlers should have some kind of covering on their head. This is this is personal with me because that's that that's that's what I did all my life. That's all, that's what I did all my life, and I had to have covering. And I cannot understand why you can be in a plant and have to have covering on your head, and you can have food out there in the restaurant, but all kind of hell in your head. So I was just seeking some information about who do who do uh, I have to go to the, to get an answer to that. That's that's really what I need to do. I will I give if you give me one second, I'll definitely I'll give you an answer in just a second, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, afterwards, thank you. Anyone next? Good evening, good afternoon. Yes, Dexter Basin, 415 White Road, Cubs in Georgia. I live on the, uh, uh, on Morningside Drive. We got a road out there. I'm trying to find out, trying to get it. Do it belong to the supply road or it belong to the county? I'm trying to get some feedback on it called the road. It's in a bad shape. I just need some feedback on it. Find out if it's a private road, or if it's still a county road. Um, if if you if that, that's the only question you have. Yes. Okay. If you would give me a second, I give you an answer in just a second. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Please state your name, your address for the record, please. Frederick Johnson, 1036, Highway 162, Covington. Uh, I rise to, uh, I know I have been talking with uh, Mr. Cowan 
uh, about uh, the park out in the uh, Swing Hill community. Anyway, I know we're going to be having a a, a, a uh, town hall meeting on the 22nd of May, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm hoping that uh, all the questions will be answered at that time, there, right? Uh, we will be having a Deacon Board meeting on Thursday night. Also, and uh, Sam was asking me, you know, is this uh, is this going to be a done deal? Uh, is in it? Is, what, 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 where are we at this point? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, Mr. Callum. Get with you after the meeting. Well, whichever one. Yeah, he'll get with you after the meeting. Big fun. Okay, okay, good enough, good enough, good enough. Uh, I had talked with uh, the secretary, uh, she had called me the other day and uh, we confirmed that date the 22nd. And I'll be glad to, you know, deliver flyers out to the community, to those subdivisions that to try to get as much participation as possible. So if uh, Mr. Tanya will draft me a copy of the flyer, I'll be glad to make copies of it and, and do that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No problem. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. Um, next, we have Commissioner comment. Uh, we're going to start with uh, uh, Commissioner Edwards. Commissioner Edwards, I don't know if you want to take the opportunity to address uh, a young man concerned. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a matter of fact, I've jotted down those questions um, that you asked, and I'm going to get with you at, as we after we adjourn here to um, get a, another contact number. You and I had spoken, and I've written your name and number down but i can't swear that i still got it so we can find it um but i want to get your kind of information i'm going to email the, the uh the uh school superintendent myself and find out what's going on maybe we can get some answers for at least noise stadium lights and um, a traffic study i believe we're owed a traffic study so um and i and i rode by there today i i really don't understand how they have access to 142 I'm not sure how many of you know the configuration out there, but when you turn, you go through the roundabout and go right on 142 now, you're not 100 yards out of the roundabout where their property starts. Yeah. It's going to be chaos unless they've got something figured out they haven't communicated with us. And that's part of the problem. As there was zero communication with me in District 1 for this, this school. Uh, not that they have to, and not that I could ever stop it, but not that I would, but um, there was zero communication with me from anybody at the board in terms of where this school was going, how the, how the people might feel out there, um, how anybody might feel. Traffic, I'm, I'm not sure what they did in terms of traffic study, um, but I will check on that for you and we'll see if we can get some answers for you. That's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to say tonight was a great meeting. Um, I was thoroughly impressed with the robotics team, um, even though uh, Commissioner Edwards didn't want to acknowledge it. I'm going to acknowledge it again, that um, there are District 2 students that attend Alcove High School. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one of them was here tonight representing. So I I'm excited to share with District 1. <laughs> Some of those amazing and awesome students uh, in Alcove High School. Um, and that was all I had. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I would like to address um, Mr. Shepard's comments. Um, health Department, uh, Department of Environmental Health regulates food establishments. All food establishments get uh, evaluated twice a year. Any food handlers that are preparing the food must wear head coverings and beard coverings, but a, uh, but a server does not have to wear that. So if they're in the kitchen preparing the food, they do have to wear a head covering and a beard covering. So if you have other questions, I'd be happy to put you in contact with the environmental health, um, Jason Reagan who is out of uh, Gwinnett, Newton, and Rockdale Health Department, and he can answer your questions in more detail. 
and he is actually in Newton County uh, this week. So it'll be a, it'll be a good time. Um, Commissioner Henderson. Oh, thank you, Mr. C. Well, I have I don't have a whole long thing. I, I think Randall is not ready to go. I know he's going to tell me he's going to tie here. He's ready to go home, and I am too. Uh, election season is fast coming upon us. <clears throat> this is the opportunity <clears throat> that everyone has to go out and and vote for his or her candidate. And one advice that I have been asked in the past and I still say in the future, know those people who you are voting for. Because if you don't know them, they might get into the exact opposite of what you want. And you say, well, no, I sure hate that, I, I hate that voice for so-and-so and so-and-so. But uh, we need to know those people. And uh, it would be nice to sit down and eat with them or um, talk with them or go to church with them. I think that's something you need to know too. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Cowan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a couple of things to address Mr. Basin's concern. White Road, uh, we did some research on that. It was on the original county uh, road list. <clears throat> it has not been abandoned, to my Mr. knowledge. Commissioner Cowan. I, I think we already have started uh, work on the road and they're going to go back out there and finish it up. So okay. we, are, we are good with that. Okay. So yeah. we're, it's, it's on the road list to be worked on yeah. and just want to let you know, but it has not been abandoned. It's still a county road to our knowledge. Uh, and uh, Mr. Johnson, yes, we're meeting in May to discuss uh, the park in Spring Hill. There's some splash money available uh, for the park to be done. Uh, we have not got into the, the details of what we need to do and everything, but uh, yes, we want to talk with the community, find out what the community wants, and see what uh, what the what they need out there, where they want it, um, and provide something that is that is uh, suitable and, and well respected by the community out there. So we'll be meeting at that time. So um, that's coming up. And I want to say, Mr. Chairman, thank you for letting me have the opportunity to go to uh, Mount Zion AME Church. Uh, that was actually very enjoyable and good to make that presentation on your behalf. And, uh, it, it was a good experience for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I definitely, I, uh, definitely appreciate you going for me. I had another engagement that I had uh, made uh, prior to that. And uh, they asked me to come and do a, a proclamation for her, and she lives in your district. So I, I thought, hey, it'll be good for you to go out there. <laughs> um, but I heard you did an excellent job. I actually saw it on the, uh, Facebook, and I shared it. So you did a great job. I, I, I'm trying to think of the young lady's name. Um, she is, um, as far as we know, that's been reported. She is the oldest, um, I think, person, not just lady, the oldest person, person in Newton County. I'm being 106 years old, um, and it's truly a blessing uh, from the Lord. Uh, so again, I, I like to thank you for um, going out there and doing that for me. Um, but I'm um, sure she was glad to see her commissioner that come in the door. <laughs> uh, commissioner, yeah. <laughs> uh, com Miss Lavin Lavinia Levin Porter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 106 years old and she lives in district five uh, that's amazing to me um tonight is there nothing else we do have an executive session i don't think we'll be taking a vote tonight uh for land and litigation uh, thank you guys for being here tonight uh we always like it when uh citizens come out and uh find out what's going on in their community say i seek a motion that we move into executive session it's been motioned by Commissioner Edwards and seconded by Commissioner Mason. All in favor? Thank you.